Hey guys, Wayback Rewind here. I'm here today with my Canon XL-H1S. My goal is to turn this into a tapeless digital recorder. It already records digitally, but on tape. So I'm going to bypass the tape and send the uncompressed digital video out to a digital recorder. I'm going to do it old school. I'm going to use an old school digital recorder, not the modern type. Coming up next, here on Wayback Rewind. Okay, welcome back. This is Canon's XL H1S. This is 2008's update to the XL H1, which came out in 2005. If you recall, by 2008, tape was pretty much done. But Canon quietly updated this camera with some interesting features. And one of the things that was holding back digital cameras was the ability to store information in an inexpensive fashion. Tape was considered a viable means to store digital video, but its linear nature made converting it into a nonlinear editing system a very inconvenient thing. And so I'm going to go with a tapeless system that allows you to put that information into the computer far easier than doing it real time on tape. And this is a very high quality camera for its time. It has a very powerful lens with three manual rings. You have a focus zoom and an iris ring, which is kind of unusual on any type of camera these days. And so this is a very nice camera to use for a tapeless system. One of the things that makes this camera unique is this high definition serial digital output. This camera can send uncompressed digital video out through this port and I can run that into a digital recorder, use modern compression techniques to get a much higher signal than this camera was able to do originally. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So one of the complaints about this camera back in 2008, HDV codec is pretty mild by today's compression standards, but digital storage media was not cheap back in 2008 and tape was considered a viable way to store digital video. SD cards were not yet of high enough capacity to be useful. For this application so based on the technology of the time Sony went with tape and if you see here this says SDHC on it and this camera does have an HDSC card but it's not used to store video it's not even used to store pictures it's used to store information about how the camera is set up so that if you go to take this camera and shoot footage somewhere else you remember how you set it up you can load the program and you're good to go but this camera cannot shoot video on an SDHC card SDHC cards back back in the day would only hold about two gigabytes they weren't large enough to be practical to store digital video but today's digital solutions can hold far larger capacity and you're able to, to record digital video onto a digital video recorder today something that was not practical back in 2008 so these cameras have an interesting use case where we can do things today that was just impossible to do back in 2008. So this is what I'm going to use as my digital recorder. It's an Atomos Samurai Blade. This is a vintage 2013 recorder that I'm going to connect to this vintage 2008 camera. This is not what you would use today in a modern setting. This has a serial digital input. Uh, something that's not very common today. This camera has a serial digital output. So all I need to do is hook this to that and this camera is now connected to a digital recorder. The Samurai uses something that was not practical back in 2008. It has a, a miniature hard drive in it. It's in a little caddy, but this is a 240 gigabyte hard drive, which is actually small by today's standards. You could easily put a 1T or 2T in here and have even more recording time. This is just a friction fit. It goes in here like this. This is battery operated. And as for battery, surprising place I'm going to get the battery from, my old Sony TRV510, which is mostly dead. It won't turn on. It won't light up. 
But the eject mechanism still works. That's the only thing that functions. But it's going to donate its battery. The Sony F550 battery has become ubiquitous as a battery for accessories such as lights and monitors and recorders. One of the complaints about the XLH1S is that it recorded in DV, which DV was a pretty good format back in the day, but people complained that it, they would have loved to record in Apple ProRes 422 in real time. The recording in Apple ProRes 422 in real time is something that this camera absolutely could not do, but if you look here carefully, this has Apple ProRes 422 is one of the ways that it can record. Okay, once you unlock this, you can pull up the menu. You have all sorts of options for file naming, date and time. To connect the recorder, it's a simple coaxial connection between the camera and the recorder. Everything passes through this simple coaxial cable, audio and video. I'm going to physically mount it to the camera with this field monitor holder cold shoe mount. By default, the SDI output is not turned on, and so through the menu, the SDI output is turned from off to on. And voila, we now have 1080. 30p in ProRes HQ, 422HQ. So now we powered up the recorder and we see we have three different resolutions here. We have HQ, 422LT. These are all actually 422. 422 Lite has a data rate of about 100 megabits, about four times better than what's on the tape. Regular 422 has a data rate of about 150 megabits, and 422HQ has a data rate of about 220 megabits, almost 10 times the data rate of what the tape can do. The HDV tape maxes out at about 25 megabits, exactly the same as standard definition mini DV. And you say, how is that possible? When standard definition mini DV has a much lower resolution than high definition mini DV. And the reason is, standard definition mini DV uses DV codec, which is a very inefficient codec by today's standards. HDV changed that to MPEG-2. MPEG-2 has a much higher compression, but it's also more lossy. The more lossy format results in a lower quality picture. The only way I can say that with, with art, potential artifacts and other things. What this data recorder does for you, the simple coaxial connection brings in the audio and the video in complete digital quality. I could put it in HQ. I get over 220 megabits per second of digital video coming in through this camera. And so this is why this is the advantage of a data recorder. An external data recorder allows you to capture the uncompressed digital signal coming off of the camera in a much higher quality than you could get onto the tape because the tape is using 2000s era MPEG-2 at 25 megabits per second 
which was not terrible, but it's highly compressed. And I can come in here and hit record. Now I'm recording. It's got time code, of course. It's recording in 1080 30p, or 29.97 to be exact. And it's recording that signal and it's encoding it directly onto this hard drive that's built into the back of this recorder. So I'm now completely tapeless. I could, I could take the tape out of here while the recorder is going. And we are truly tapeless. I've taken the tape out while the hard drive is recording. And there we go. So now I want to show you some of the other features of the blade. Here I'm showing how you manually can stop the recording. From this mode, you can access other displays. It's showing two battery operation. I bought two brand new batteries just for, to run the blade so that I don't ever have to worry about having any power. Got two brand new oversized batteries. Can pretty much run that all day long. Going back to the main menu, you have a favorite and reject. This allows you to tag certain scenes as your favorite scenes while you're out in the field. That will help you to when you get to your editing to know which clips you like and which ones you don't like. There are several different waveform monitors on here that you can access and you even have an HDR mode which improves the quality of the unit overall. This is how you format the hard drive. I would always recommend formatting it in the unit versus doing it in the computer. With this hard drive you have about two hours of recording time. This gets back to the main menu Now we're going to eject the hard drive. You can do this without powering it down. The operating system will allow you to hot swap the hard drives. Just pull this hard drive out. And it uses the standard connectors that you would have on a hard drive. I have my cable here. My cable will allow me to connect it to my computer. I plug it into my hub there. It opens just like any other hard drive. You have access, direct access to all the files. Here I'm playing back the file on the computer. I'm going to show you the properties of that file just to prove that we are in fact getting 1920 by 1080. So I go to details here. We are definitely getting 1920 by 1080 with over 200 megabits per second of data compared to the 25 megabits that the tape would have. And there you have it. I took my Canon XL H1S, which is a mini DV high definition camcorder from 2008. And then I took it and modified it to tapeless using an Atomos Samurai blade from 2013. A single coaxial cable connected the two and I was able to use Apple ProRes 422HQ in order to get a full HD 1920 by 1080 29.97p signal recorded onto a hard drive which I could remove from the recorder plug it directly into my computer and import video 
It's a very high quality setup, probably the highest quality setup I have, all things considered. So as always, please like or subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.